Today's social media segment is brought to you by Terrebonne General Health System. Your health is our legacy. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Buick, the craft of modern luxury. St. Martin and Bork, know your rights. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Bayou Time news special. I'm Martin Falls. Now, over the weekend in Homa, a Trump parade was held to shore up votes and turnouts for the former president of the United States and also the Republican chosen candidate for president in this year's election. Now, to most, this would be a very innocent parade, and it would be a big deal for most of the supporters in Homa who already know that Trump will go on or somewhere between 70 and 80 percent in the area. However, there was one person in the parade that was leading the parade with lights on in his vehicle that had a Trump cutout, and that was the parish president, Jason Bajron. Now, to most, that would be no big deal. Jason Bajron leading the parade, voting for Trump, I'm sure his Trump base, enjoyed that moment. But for others, it was a violation of the law. So now it brings me to the actual legal angle of what takes place. This is confusing to most. Most people who are just outside of government don't really understand why it would be such a big deal for the parish president to put a Trump cutout in the vehicle that he drives every day and be in a parade. But the laws are clearly stated. So I decided to bring in Tanner McGee, who was once elected by you all in this area, and he was guidelined by the same rules and regulations that really are the guidelines for all elected officials. One of the things that's probably interesting about this case is that um, it touches three different areas of the law. There's the Constitution, which prohibits it, the election code that prohibits it, and the ethics laws that prohibit it. So it's three different sections that deal with this very specific issue, all of them applying mm -hmm. to state and local officials, especially the constitutional article um, that prohibits the public use of funds to urge you to vote for a candidate. In talking with a lot of the council members and also the council chair, the vice chair, NAACP president, and others, I think the sentiment among all of them is to follow the law as the leader of the NAACP, someone who's represented the, not only the African-American community, I've got to give you some credit, you've represented the community right. in general on different issues. What's your thoughts on that? First of all, Martin, it was wrong, and the parish president should not have done what he did. Uh, the only thing I can say to that is, if we had a government employee who would have done the same thing that the parish president did, that person would have been fired. The rules are clear, the policy is clear, the law is clear, and all I can say is the community as a whole is upset about what the parish president did, um, Jason Bedron. I also spoke with Councilman Brian Pledger on the situation. When did you first see it, or did you see it in person, or did somebody send you a picture? When did you first become aware that this was taking place with the parish president? Well, I started receiving, uh, started receiving, I just randomly received a picture, and then um, I started receiving phone calls back to back to back, you know. And I had some questions, because with technology today, it could have been Photoshopped, it could have been, who knows, right? And I'm more, I, I was wanting to kind of see for myself. I said, well, I, I, I don't know if this is really what it's, um, what people are telling me. So I decided to go out. And that's when, when I went out, I actually saw it for myself. And I was able to take a couple pictures myself just to, 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 to capture the moment, to, to, to see if this, we really do have a problem here. Also, Tanner McGee, the House Speaker Pro Temp. He sat down with us because as Speaker Pro Temp, he also was guidelined by the same rules and regulations. So we spoke to him about what his insights were, both as a speaker and as an attorney, knowing the law. Outside of what 
people's actual politics are, there's laws. But people are sort of mixing this up to, well, why can't he ride with a Trump son in the vehicle? But this is beyond politics, beyond racial motivation. The law is the law. So can you sort of break down the law for us? Sure. Uh, President Bajeron is more, he can ride around a Trump bumper sticker on his private car. He can take photos of Trump. Uh, he can put it on his Facebook page, his private Facebook page. What he can't do is use any public funds to support Trump. Um, and that's you know, across the board. You know, I think a lot of people in Terrell Parish would be very upset if a public official used their tax dollars to support Kamala Harris. So you have to do the, the rules will have to apply to everybody. Mm-hmm. And so when he's using his official public capacity and the real key money real key issue is public funds Mm -hmm. and so if he's in a public vehicle and he's tanked up that car and there's the maintenance in the road all that's going to be public funds that's where the problem becomes is the public funds not the fact that he is supporting a particular candidate he's a private citizen he's entitled to his opinion is you know it's america but it's the public funds it's my tax dollars being used to ask you to do vote in a certain particular way that is the issue I also spoke with the council chair, John Amadi, about if the council ever gets involved in some type of censorship or warning to a parish president in this circumstance. As the chair, how do you handle these types of things? And because obviously we've seen statewide a few of these incidents take place over the years and they can be handled completely differently in each situation, but from a leadership standpoint, what do you do? How do you accept that? And then how do you convince the council as a whole what to do? Well, Martin, you know, there are things that the council can do pertaining to that. Uh, One of the first things that I I did was contact administration and see how they were going to do it because I wanted to give them first opportunity before we start trying to take any sort of actions just to see what they do. In the past and in other parishes, when something like this happened, um, you know, they they uh, reimburse for the usage of the vehicle and fuel costs and, and what have you, basic the, the market value of what a rental on that type vehicle would be. And uh, I was told that first thing Monday morning, he was going to do that. So I'm assuming that he he took care of it. And um, so as long as he does the things that he needs to do to be responsible for his actions, because it was a lapse in judgment, um, then I think the council um, will hear what the the public has to say and um, and then let it work its way through the procedures, the system of what it needs to be. As a council, how are y'all going to address this? Well, um, it happened over the weekend. Was it just not knowing the law or was it just maybe forgetting about the law? If you want to be fair with it, I'm held to the same law that he held to. There are some cases, ignorance is a law, there's no excuse. Uh, the old saying is, show me your company, I'll tell you who you are. But your actions will, sh- will definitely tell me you who you are. Uh, it might have been, perhaps, uh, I can't speak for it, the other person. I recall the parish president's election. I did not get involved with it because the same numbers that you mentioned that uh, President Trump won by 78% of the vote in Turbon Parish, and he won um, the state of Louisiana. In that case, going forward for Turbon Parish, that's one of the reasons why I didn't get in, uh, openly go out uh, and, and campaign for any particular candidate because I, I have to work with anybody that's there. Mm-hmm. So going forward, in my opinion, was not a wise move because basically the Republic, I mean, uh, the Democrats have already conceded the state of Louisiana to go forward and show the rest of the people that you're going to be fair and not go to play with egos or who supported, who didn't support. I can't speak for him. I think, you know what I mean, if he's in front of Mike, he's going to speak for himself. But I can speak for Carl Harding. I say, well, you know what I mean, the way I see it, if I stayed out of the race, somebody else's business, to actually go forward where Carl Harding, an African-American representative of District, uh, District 
two, wanted to advance for the overall people in Turbo and Parish, I would say it's a bad move. What if the parish president says, okay, I realize now I made a mistake, takes out his checkbook, writes a check for, I guess, a day use. I mean, it was a day event. Writes a check for a day of use and pays back the fuel. Does that make it any better? I mean, I think from the standpoint of the authorities that would prosecute it, yes. I mean, they're not – people are out to get people. I mean, you know, uh, I don't think there's anybody who wants a public official who unintentionally makes a mistake and doesn't realize something to have – but has a, has a violation occurred? The violation still occurred. Now, if he would have done some sort of agreement on the front end where saying, I'm going to rent this vehicle privately, and he can show and document that this was all private, again, it would be more than just the use of the – more than just the gas that went into it. It would also be the wear and tear on the vehicle. So it would have to be – a reasonable rate that you could expect to rent a like vehicle that he pays. All that would have to been done on the front end. And as an attorney, I would tell you, I'd like to have all that in writing and signed before, not after the fact. Um, but I do think that that will help when he, you know, if there's a person in authority who is, whether it's the ethics board, whether it's the AG's office or the DA's office, when they're going through this thing, it's an honest mistake. He paid back the money. No big deal. I think that's what you're looking at. But as the letter of the law, there's no exception for that. It's a violation that the minute a public fund is expended, there was a violation. We're talking about the Paris president, someone um, who is our leader in our community. Martin, when businesses and uh, other people who want to come to Terrebonne Parish, some of the things they look at is crime, um, they look at schools, um, they look at housing. And to tap on the Terrebonne Parish, uh, if you are interested in moving a business here or moving to Terrebonne Parish, what do you see? You're going to see the parish president who rode around Terrebonne Parish in a government taxpayer's vehicle like it was funny in a way because they say he was boasting, he was smiling, he was happy about what he was doing. And that's the reason why people say he know exactly what he was doing when he used that taxpayer vehicle to parade up and down Turbon Parish. I want the people out there that's listening to me right now to understand this is not a white and black situation. And just because that may be the unspoken national thing that's not actually said here, I don't want nobody out there to actually pit it there. And then it's going to be a white and black thing when you got Republicans, white and black, um, uh, that disagree what's going on nationally. So, you know what I mean? No, that's, that's not going to happen here in Turbulent Parish. I don't want it to happen here in Turbulent Parish. To me, I feel it's pretty, pretty blatant that it happened, you know, the way that it did. But at the same time, I want it to be a teachable moment, and we can visit some of those previous instances, and possibly we can make those right and not make those same mistakes again. Can this be a teaching point for everybody involved? Because I find that a lot of people or just not really cognizant of this law that's on there, and people don't understand this law. Absolutely. Um, I think, you know, it is a great teachable moment for everybody who's going to run for office. And you actually see this, it's more somewhat common than you would realize because you have a lot of people who are not familiar with public service. Um, they run as, I'm not a politician, and I'm going to be an outsider and disrupt things. Um, and then they don't necessarily take the turn, the time to learn what they need to know uh, on the legalities of being a public official. So it, there's a lot of problems when those two things intersect. Um, and, and then if you don't surround yourself with people who have been there before and know what you can and can't do because it's a big, bigger deal. We spend at the legislature an ungodly amount of time of, of doing uh, – educational courses for the legislators so they will understand as best they can what they can and can't do. And we always preach to them, or we did preach to them, if you have a question, please ask somebody. Here's where you should be alerted to. Call a lawyer, call us, call the Board of Ethics, call the, you know, somebody to, to, to do on the front end. Um, it's There's a lot of gray areas. I don't want to be, it's not always as easy and it's not, I'm not um, a saint throwing a stone. It's, 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 it's difficult, more difficult than it appears to do because there's so many various rules. Mm -hmm. All right, I tell you What's different about this is the ethical stuff. Board of Ethics will find you because you, you filed the wrong form on the wrong date. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, and it makes there was an ethical violation. Yeah, I mean, you were trying to do it. You filed the wrong form. So there's a lot of stuff that happens in ethics. It's just about transparency and file and, and form filing. Mm -hmm. 
uh, bookkeeping type stuff. This actually goes to an election code issue, which is a much bigger deal. Um, and so that's where I think the issue here is, is that you really should familiarize with the ethics code and you really should consult with an attorney when you get yourself, once you're elected and you get yourself doing political events, it's a very, it's a very, uh, some gray areas. Because the one exception to the rule is the public official is allowed to put out information that's purely factual. And what do we mean by that? That's like if there's something on the ballot, uh, and they want to explain an amendment that the people are going to be voting on. But we can, you can use tax dollars to provide the public with the information. But what you can't do is try to sway their vote. You can't put a twist on it. Mm-hmm. And if you put a picture of you next to Kamala Harris, a picture of you next to Trump, and you're saying vote for this person, that's where you really got yourself into a pickle. This is not a racial issue. Let's make that clear. This issue is about right and wrong. Paris President Jason Bedron was wrong. What would you want to see the process be in this case? The law is the law, mm-hmm. and no one is above the law. Um, some people say yes, uh, it was a bonehead um, decision. But Martin, if hypothetical, if you would rob a bank and you would go before the judge and say, Your Honor, I'm sorry for what I did, you still would be held accountable. And hypothetical. If you were advising the parish president right now, what would be your advice? Call your attorney every time you you have a decision to make, even in you know things that you think are benign, like showing up at a political rally. Find out the rules on the front end. Talk to that attorney. They're there for a reason. They're you know. As attorneys, we always laugh. People call you after they've done the event, right? You know, did I do this? Was it legal? No. (laughs) Um, Call me on the front end, and it's cheaper. It'll save you more money than having to do in the back end. And look, I don't, don't, you know, it's. I think everybody has the right intentions. It's not an issue of intentions are good or supporting the right candidate. But these are laws. They do have consequences. And, you know, ignorance is never defense to the law. It'll be a learning lesson for everybody involved. Sometimes we forget where we are and what we're doing. And we, we make those faux pas, and we have to, uh, just like anybody in the public, we have to stand for what the consequences of our actions are. As long as, you know, he's going through and he's doing the things that he needs to do to make things right uh, in accordance with all those that you spoke of, then uh, I don't see the need for the council to take any further action. Uh, the message that I want to send here is we've learned from carelessness. We've learned from our mistakes. And listen, we, we, we all make mistakes. Mm-hmm. And we're going to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. But own your mistake, learn from your mistake, and move forward. And teach other folks how not to make the same mistake. Mm-hmm. Let's pay the penalty and let's move on as a community. Whatever the law requires. Mm-hmm. And I'm not at liberty to be able to give uh, that advisory opinion such as uh, the ethics board's will. You know, so it's 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 kind of a gray area. You know, yeah. I don't I don't wish ill on anyone at mm-hmm. any any time. Do I want folks to understand when I um, if I make a mistake or if I have something careless that I do? Absolutely, I would want that. But at the same time, um, I have broad enough shoulders to understand. I put myself in that situation, and I have to accept whatever comes after that. My advice would have been. You know, use your own private vehicle. That would have been probably would have solved all the problems right there. Uh, but if you're going to be there, I think you had a better defense if you didn't have put the Trump cutout next to you because you could say, "Well, I was just in an election parade. I didn't know that we were supporting one candidate or the other. I heard we had an election parade, and I think I wasn't supporting Trump. I was just showing up for the election." Mm-hmm. But then when you take the cutout of Trump and put it next to you, it's hard to to make that argument credibly that you were there for those reasons. Mm-hmm. You knew what you were going. It was to, to for a particular candidate, and that becomes the problem. What would you? hope to see? Well, I would hope to see that he go out in the community and talk to the people who are upset. Several people called me and said they would like to talk to the parish president about what he did. So he has an obligation not only to the African-American community, but he has an obligation to the community of Terrebonne Parish as a whole. When you get other people involved with it, and those circumstances the people that are employed by Terrebonne Parish. I don't know whether the police department got paid extra or was anything extra, anything that's happened right there. There's a lot of involvement that's, that's, that's dealing with that. You know what I mean? And, and, and 
I'm here to, 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 to balance things, not to let it get out of hand, but the ultimate person that is responsible with that, and all I'm saying, I can look him in dead in his face, is, is him. He has to reckon with that. Either he has to fess up or whatever of the circumstances by the letter of the law will go forward. It's not about black and white. However, it's in black and white. There's probably a lot of people watching at home and like, I don't really care. You broke the law. I support my guy. Right. However, we need to realize laws have to apply to everybody. I think one of the great things about this country is we've always pride ourselves in being a, a nation of laws, not a nation of men. Once again, we did contact the parish president's office through their chief communications officer, Robbie Lee. We will continue to offer the desk here for the parish president to talk about the situation, but also we invite him to come on this week and talk about something major as a hurricane or a tropical system will be in the Gulf of Mexico. And we do have a lot of other business to talk about and inform the public when it comes to matters of Terrebonne Parish. We appreciate you all watching as we have a big week. We have a presidential election. We have a hurricane or a tropical system in the Gulf. And we have the Saints coach being fired. So a lot more to talk about here on Bayou Time. Have a good night. Today's social media segment is brought to you by South Louisiana Bank. It's better when we bank together. Weights and Downer, attorneys at law. Terrebonne Ford, built Ford Tough.